The Mets' 2015 season is an early flower, and the Mets' early success has brought the fans out in droves. Met fans coming out of the woodwork. Big crowd last night. Another one expected tonight as the Mets try and keep it rolling. At City Field in New York, Pix 11 Sports presents New York Mets baseball tonight. The Mets play the Miami Marlins. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets play game three of their four-game series against the Marlins. The Mets have won six in a row. They're 5-0 and at home for the first time in ten years. Their last four wins have all been in come-from-behind fashion, first time since 1999. They've done that. Now, it's very early in the season, 151 games left to play. But I guess my question is, does all of this provide some equity for this team going forward when the season gets a little later? Absolutely, Gary. We are talking about a team here that really is basically a young team with a lot of players coming into their own that finally feel like they're major leaguers. They're playing in division, as we mentioned earlier in this homestand. They're winning at home. Remember, you Met fans have long memories. A couple years ago, they couldn't win at home. They're winning at home and in division, and they're winning in come-from-behind fashion, as Gary said, which is always infectious. When you have come-from-behind wins, it does something to a ball club. And you know what? I think it's energized the veterans on this team. I've never seen Cologne so animated. I loved his quotes in the paper today. Kadire has been such a wonderful influence in that clubhouse. And as you said, it's only 11 games. But I like what I see. I'm going to the mound tonight as Jacob DeGrom. The last time he faced the Miami Marlins, DeGrom made some history here at City Field. Well, what did he do? Uh, eight straight strikeouts. He tied a major league record. I think Deshays from Houston against the Dodgers was the one that uh, he tied. And you can see right here, just overmatched this Marlin team. He's had four starts against them last year, and he had an ERA under two. Uh, that start in particular was uh, outstanding. DeGrom got the home opener start on Monday and now going back to the mound for his third start of the year and going up against a team that he's already had a lot of success against. On the other side of the ledger, no success at all for Matt Latos through his first two starts as a Marlin. Well, just came over from Cincinnati. He's a two-time 14-game winner. Had a bad knee in spring training. They say he's a little out of shape, couldn't do the drills. His first two starts, he's been hammered. He's a guy that comes straight over the top, straight fastball. They say he's gotten his pitches up, and he's been hammered. So it's DeGrom against Latos on the warmest day in New York since last September. Let's try and keep the good times rolling. All the action coming your way tonight on Picks 11.
Get in your comfort zone with the most advanced Elantra yet. Visit your Hyundai dealer today. By Verizon Fios, the most fastest, most reliable internet. By the generously appointed Lexus ES and ES Hybrid. By McDonald's, stop by for the new 100% sirloin third pound burgers starting at $4.99. Price and participation may vary. By Acela, take off. And by Honda, hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2015 models. MLB.TV Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. Watch every out-of-market game live on demand in true HD. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Visit MLB.TV for details. Keys to the game are brought to you by Hyundai. Ah, uh, yes, it is brought to you by Hyundai. And DeGrom, of course, is the best ERA against any of the divisional teams in four starts last year in his Rookie of the Year season. Stanton, of course, Always got to keep him in the ballpark. The Mets haven't, but got away with it. And the come-from-behind victories, which we talked about in the open, Gary, very infectious. And we're going to have a very big crowd tonight, and I think the crowd is getting infected. Jacob DeGrom making his way in. Ready to face the Marlins as the Mets go for seven in a row. First pitch coming right up. and a third scoreless innings since then and on a very comfortable night at City Field here's the lineup he'll face for the Miami Marlins brought to you by Land Rover above and beyond first start in the series for Jared Saltalamaki who's sort of become a forgotten man with JT Real Muto coming up from the minor leagues otherwise the same unit out there Marcelo Zuna had a day off yesterday Giancarlo Stanton is homered in the first two games of the series in fact he's homered in five straight games against the Mets Tying a record. Nobody's ever homered in six straight games against the Mets. DeGrom will try and keep that from happening tonight. Well, there's Jacobs' uh, early numbers. Uh, one loss was an unfortunate loss, a two run home run to Ryan Zimmerman in his first start up in Washington in the opening series. Lost that game two to one, but he's come right back with a scoreless out of his last time out. He's just picked it up where he's left off last year. Washington, by the way, down. Down in Washington. Yes. And we'll take a look at the defense. The, I, I don't follow that, but hold on here. Hang, hold that thought. This is a look at your defense, your Met defense, brought to you by the all new Kia Sorrento. And there's the outfield. Lagaris, of course, the gold in center made three fabulous plays last night. Duda, Murphy, Flores, and Campbell on the infield. And Darno back in the lineup after a night off. All right, let's see if we can get this straight. You said up in Washington. If you look at a map, New York's here and oh, Washington's okay. here. So it's geographically. There you go. 
Gary, don't confuse me. <laughs> it's like we say out west. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> D. Gordon will lead things off for the Marlins. Gordon just one for eight in this series. Mets have done a great job keeping the top two guys in the batting order off base in the first two games. Gordon and Yelich have combined two for 16 in the first two games, and the Mets have won them both. DeGrom's first pitch of the night is in for a strike, and we're underway. Gordon got off to a very hot start, but the Mets have cooled him down. Still hitting 333 on the early season in his first year with Miami after coming over in trade from the Dodgers. And drops down a beauty of a bunt. Can Campbell throw him out? Off the bag, oh. Duda. Safe. So a bunt single for Gordon to start the night. Well, they've kept Gordon off the bases in this series. Led the league in stolen bases last year. And Lucas could have stayed on the bag. This is not that bad a throw. It's he's not getting any stretch towards third base, the thrower, the third baseman, excuse me. And that would clear you of the runner. Did that throw actually hit Gordon before Duda corralled it? Not sure. Terry Collins is going to come out. He might challenge this call at first base. Oh, he is. And I believe we're going to have a challenge on the very first play of the game. Let's, Let's see it. if Duda was on the bag with the ball. And he it is. looked like it might have hit Gordon before it went in his mitt, which is so odd. But is that he a... might have that in time. I think he's out. And he is out. And that's considered now, folks. Oh, it did ricochet. That's what I thought. It hit him in the rear end and then into Duda's mitt, but before Gordon hit the bag. And they may reverse this. This is very uh, fortuitous for the Metsies here. Because you don't want this guy on the bases. It's interesting. Gordon last night was thrown out at first base and signaled safe. Here he wasn't so sure. Play I under review brought to you by Mazda, KBB.com's lowest cost to own brand over five years. I have never seen that in my. Uh, Professional baseball. You never life. played a ricochet off no. of the runners. I wouldn't caught the ball. Body. No. It, it was different. He's on the bag. That it, is. He's on the bag. And it's in the, the ball's glove. In his glove. And Gordon has not yet arrived. And he completes the catch. Now, did he secure it before the foot yes, came off? Yes, that's going to be the. Yeah. Uh, and that was the initial call, I think, that he had failed to hold the bag. We've but seen. that's going to be close because the toe is coming off just as that ball is getting cradled in the glove. Well we had a bizarre night when Harvey's last outing with the long delay what the six minute delay. And I'm sorry not on Harvey's on uh, Ichiro the other night so. This has been very. Good to see DeGrom throwing warm up pitches while this is going on. Because we might have another long delay like we did. The other night. And you made the point, Gary, that if it's going to be like a, a long delay, just it can't, you can't let it go on for like six minutes like the night before. Well, my feeling has always been that replay was put in to stop the egregious mistakes. That if it's a hair's breadth mistake, you know, replay only slows down the game. And, and you might as well allow the call to stand if you can't. Really tell. I mean, the, the standard is supposed to be clear and convincing evidence. So if there's not See, clear and convincing evidence and you haven't figured it out in two minutes, I don't think that six minutes should be required. Now, if Lucas gets a better stretch, Gary, this play doesn't even, he makes the catch mm. out in front. He didn't get a good stretch towards Campbell. Then his glove is out extended further and it doesn't hit the runner, and we don't have this review right now. And this is like, Another tough one. So it's the second pitch of the game, and let's see what the umpires back in the bunker have determined. And they call him safe, so okay. they do not overturn the call. And I can only imagine, Keith, that they ruled that Duda was indeed off the bag and didn't secure the ball because it was yeah. so because it was a ricochet. So you know, I, no gripe from me. So it's a bunt single for Gordon that starts the game. Two, hour, uh, two minutes and 58 seconds on the review, and so the Mets have used their challenge for the night. So Christian Yelich will bat against DeGrom, and we'll see how Jake handles the delay. He was throwing warm up tosses while they were reviewing the play. Yelich won for eight in the series, and like Gordon, he has been looking to bunt 
on numerous occasions. Last night, his first three at bats, he showed bunt in every one of them. And by the way, not a bad play by Campbell at third base on that bunt. Gordon, 64 stolen bases last year, led the National League. He's got six this year. And DeGrom, Forsman over the outside corner, nothing and one. Mets have already thrown Gordon out once in this series. That was a terrific throw by Travis Darno in the sixth inning on Thursday night. Big lead. See how he's straddling where the cut of the grass is, where the angle with the the arc begins towards the third, the first base line. That's considered a strong lead. Rom early in his career has done a good job controlling the running game. One of many of those ancillary things that he has done well. There are the stolen base leaders in the National League last year. Gordon beat out Billy Hamilton. Kind of ran away with it. By the way, Hamilton today came out of the Reds game and might have a leg injury, which is something to keep note of because he had gotten off to a strong start. So DeGrom in his last start got the win but something extraordinary happened was that he gave up more hits than innings pitched. He went six and change and uh, gave up seven hits something you don't normally see and right handers ironically are hitting 391 against him. I'm sorry left handers. And I won't say ironically. So. The counter to that is his outstanding changeup. In the first game in Washington, he did not have great command of his change. Two and one to Yelich with Stanton on deck. And DeGrom misses low again. And now he's behind three and one. So I think you're going to send the runner here. You got a very accomplished hitter up here, even though I think he strikes out way too much. For the swing that he has, he struck out over a hundred times last year. Yelich. No, oh, wow. I just think when you got a team, Gary, that is struggling, they got off to a terrible start. They've come in here, lost the first two games, and really have been flat. I think you want to make things happen. Marlins had a team meeting before the game today in the wake of comments that Giancarlo Stanton made after last night's game that his team was lacking fire. Three and two with nobody out, and Gordon is on the run, and Yelich strikes out. Darno with a good throw. Strike him out, throw him out, double play. Wow. A big time start to the night for Darno as he throws out Gordon for the second time in the series. Well, Gordon on three and two is not going to get his best jump. And that's out of the strike zone, ball four. You see the reaction from Yelich. He knew he chased a bad one. This is a different Travis Darno throwing the ball than the one we saw last season. And that's a huge out as Stanton steps in with two out and nobody on. Good pitch to throw, no wasted motion. Good footwork. Stanton has homered in the first inning each of the last two nights, his first two homers of the year. He's now homered in his last five games against the Mets. Only two other players have ever done that. Mm. Check swing foul ball. Back in 1963, Hank Aaron homered in five straight games against the Mets. In 2007, Ryan Howard. Homered in five straight games against the Mets, and now Stanton, over the last two seasons, has done the same. Degrom ahead of him, 0 and 2. And wastes the slider, 1 and 2. Well, that's a huge play. That strike him out, throw him out, yes. double play. You've got, could have been ball four, runners on first and second, nobody out with the big guy up. Struck him out. DeGrom with the slider strikes out Stanton back to back strikeouts for Jacob DeGrom and the Mets have come to bat with no score at City Field.
in the last five games will come to bat in the bottom of the first not trailing. <laughs> it's the starting lineup for the Mets brought to you by Land Rover above and beyond. Travis Darno sat last night with Anthony Recker behind the plate. He's back in the two hole. Michael Kadires do a day off tomorrow, but in there tonight against Matt Latos, who's really scuffled through his first two starts with the Marlins. Yes. Well, Travis Darno had a bone chip removed from his elbow after the season. It seems to have made a lot of difference. No wasted motion, perfect throw. Good fundies, good footwork. That's the key. The key to catching, uh, throwing is, is footwork. Well, here's Granderson, 0 for 7 in this series. His average at 147, but his on base percentage still at a very good 356. And the overhand fastball in for a strike from Latos. Well, Latos is right over the top. Had elbow and knee surgery in the offseason in between uh, 2013 after 2013. Granderson lifts one to pretty deep left, but Yelich has it lined up. Step onto the warning track to get it for the first down. And we'll take a quick look at the Marlin defense brought to you by the all new Kia Sorrento. And that's Yelich, Gold Glover in left. Osuna is back in center field. He is really struggling at the plate. Uh, Gordon and Echevarria, you got a pretty good middle up there, middle infielder, Keystone, as they call it in baseball jargon. And Salta Lamacchia, who has been just really struggling both offensively and defensively, gets a start tonight. Lingo. <laughs> it's Darno with one out and nobody on. And takes the fastball below the knees from Latos. Darno 0 for 4 in the opening game of the series. Sat out last night. So he's cooled down a bit after a very hot start. He's been steady though. Garrett, uh, 8 RBI. He's been hitting in that up in that order. Since David went down. Flies this one down the right field line. Stanton right over near the line to get it. And there are two out. So you can tell right now, folks, that Latos has this uh, little funky motion with his arms, but it comes right over the top. He's a big, tall kid. So you've got to make him get his fastball down. He's very effective up out of the strike zone, above the letters. Those kind of guys, you've got to make him get it down. Well, this is a very important anniversary for Lucas Duda. It was one year ago today that the Mets traded Ike Davis to Pittsburgh and gave Lucas the full time job at first base, and he has certainly made that move look extraordinary over the last calendar year. What was that song, What a Difference a Day Makes? Well, how about What a Difference a Year Makes? Mm -hmm. Four for eight in this series. They put on the shift against him. And he yanks one down the line, headed toward the corner. Fair ball. Another extra base hit for Lucas Duda. That is Duda's seventh extra base hit in his last five games. Eight total. Seventh double on the year. In this young season, curveball right down the pipe, staying back. This has been his key so far. And I think Terry Collins said it today in the pre uh, game interview uh, with the press is that Lucas is not trying to pull the ball even though he pulled that ball before he'd be out in front pulling it foul. Now he's keeping it in fair territory. So the Mets have a two out base runner at second and here's Michael Kadire who's really turned it up the last few days four for eight in this series. He's hit in six straight games up to 317 for the season. Watching Matt Latos on the mound. Latos at one time was considered a budding star in this league, but he's not throwing nearly as hard as he no, used to. Correct. Only six foot six. He's a big, strong kid. 245 pounds. I mean, there was a time when he was routinely 93 to 95 with his fastball. Now he's more like 89. To 91. Well, Gary, in those years in San Diego, he was a guy that struck out. Almost as many strikeouts to innings pitched. His most was 189. So he's a strikeout guy in his day. Couldn't get out of the first inning in his first start of the year against the Braves. Lasted just four innings in his second start. Well, he's all inked up, isn't he? 
Latos acquired from the Reds in a trade that sent a young pitcher, Anthony DeSclafani, to Cincinnati. And that's trading youth for a veteran. Oh, look, there's, there's, there's some youth. Fireworks night, am I correct? During the game or after? Af well, hopefully both. But from the blue team. Hmm. One, two from Latos. Mm. And that's on the outside corner. Kadir caught looking. And Latos has his first strikeout. After one at City Field, Mets and Marlins, no score. Big leagues much better for Chris Bryant today on base five times. Cubs blew a 4 1 lead in the ninth, but 1 and 11. Aaron Harang pitched the Phillies past the Nats, and we'll say Abreu had a grand slam for the White Sox in their 12 3 win over Annabelle Sanchez and the Tigers. There's an old Met fan, not too old. Well, we were talking about youth and veterans. Yes. Martin Prado leads off the second inning. Prado's had a good series, four for eight with a home run in the first two games. Prado, Morris, and Ozuna for the Marlins, who come into the day three and eight on the season, not what they anticipated. And I uh, thought it was interesting that Giancarlo Stanton called out his teammates a little bit. They were congratulating him for homering in five straight games against the Mets, and he said, it means absolutely nothing. We lost again. And then he started talking about how they have a good vibe on the team, but that they're lacking fire, that they're playing two or three innings at a time instead of nine. And as you noted, it's not the first time he's said things like that. Two years ago, did he not come out and was critical when he was a younger player and was critical of the effort by the, the team? So I like that. He's a very conscientious young man. I love to call him Achilles. He's going to be Achilles as long as he's playing. He's just an Adonis out there. Curveball in there for a call strike three. And Prado begs to differ. Well, Kadir thought his ball was outside, and Prado, you'd never see Prado moan and groan. Well. Gary Cedarstrom took his sweet time before he called that well, pitch. Let's see. It's the changeup, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's too close to take there. Well, look at Cedarstrom. He waited a long time and made Mr. Prado rather unhappy. Well, it's three straight strikeouts for DeGrom. One out and nobody on. Now Michael Morris. Morris won for seven in the series, hitting 244 in the early season. And grounds one for Flores. Takes his time. Two out. 
There is your umpire and crew for tonight. Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, has the plate. The rookie Sean Barber at first, Eric Cooper at second, and Lance Barksdale, who had the plate last night, is at third. So two out of nobody on. Now Marcelo Zuna, who took a seat on the bench last night. Ichiro Suzuki played center field. Zuna has been struggling in the early going. Zuna hit over 20 home runs last year, and it's been Morris and Ozuna that have really kind of hurt this lineup. They both are struggling. Now Morris not so much. He's got six RBIs, hitting 244, but Ozuna really, really struggling. As is Jared Saltalamakia, who would be next. Well, the Marlins made a big improvement last year. They won 77 games last season after uh, stripping down and bottoming out in 2013. Rolled down to Duda. And he'll take it himself to get Ozuna. And an easy 1 2 3 inning for Jacob DeGrom. Just nine pitches to get him through the top of the second with no score. Just astoundingly beautiful. Well, last year the Marlins, who had lost, had uh, won 62 games and lost 100 the year before, won 77, and they were hoping for a similar bump this year to get them into the postseason. Although they have certainly not gotten off to a good start, three and eight under Mike Redmond in his third year. Remember three years ago in 2012 they moved into their new ballpark and they spent a lot of money and um, built a team that they thought was ready to win and they lost 92 games and they broke it down and took a step backwards in order to get to where they improved last year. There's Murphy hitting one toward the middle of the diamond but Gordon there on the back end. And Murphy thrown out one pitch and one away from Adelaide. So they kind of went for it this year. They brought in Dan Heron and D. Gordon from L.A. and Traded for Latos and signed Morris to a free agent contract. Traded for Prado, picked up Ichiro on a uh, a low money deal, and they think and they they thought and they they still hope that they've made the improvements to be a contender this year. Well, they did everything right. I felt, and it's just they got to get Ozuna going, and uh, you know Morris is kind of a stopgap. They didn't get much out of Garrett Jones last year at first base. Morse is like a, the next act, a veteran hoping to get something out of him. Uh, but Ozuna's a budding star, and he, what are you, 23 last year? 23 and 85, yeah. And he's just he's got to get it going. I mean, see, 11 games in, he's off to a bad start. Well, to me, what's becoming even more of an issue is their pitching. 
Campbell takes a strike two and one. I mean, Jose Fernandez, they're hoping will be back in June or maybe after the All Star break, coming back from Tommy John, and that's great, but you know, with Henderson Alvarez down now and Latos struggling the way he has, all of a sudden that rotation looks like a real liability. And Campbell finds the hole past Echeverria. And Eric Campbell continues to produce his fourth straight game starting at third base, filling in for the injured David Wright. He's bored with one out. Fastball belt high out over the plate. He's a line drive hitter. I like what the job he did last year, and that's a very uh, nice effort. That's a nice name. How about the last two uh, guys, uh, the seven and eight hitters in this order, Gary? <laughs> That's 11 syllables between Echeverria and Salta Lamachia. <laughs> it's on you. That should be illegal. <laughs> Here's Juan Lagares hitting seventh in the order. That name barely fits across his broad shoulders. Lagares takes a fastball for a strike. Well, we talked about Jose Fernandez. And uh, certainly they were planning for him to not be here the first few months. They weren't planning for Henderson Alvarez to go on the shelf early. And that really hurts. There goes the runner and Campbell steals the base as Salta Lamacchia can't handle the pitch. So Eric Campbell got a nice jump and picks up his first stolen base of the season. Well, this will tell you right now the scouting report is run on Salta Lamacchia. And if you're a pitcher, Gare, and you're a veteran like Latos, and you know you have a liability behind the plate, you've got to hold runners on a little more carefully. Campbell had three steals last year in his rookie season. Now he has his first of this year. And the Mets have a runner in scoring position with one out. One and one to Lagaris with Wilma Flores on deck. Gordon makes a run to the bag, but Latos ignores him and throws a breaking ball, and Lagares dumps it into center field for a base hit. Campbell got a good jump. He'll score easily, and the Mets have an early 1-0 lead. Stolen base big for Campbell. He comes home on the Lagares hit. So now Campbell now has scored four runs. He's hit the ball hard. He's been contributing. And hanging slider, and but it's a ball you could pull. But with Juan struggling right now, I, he has that natural ability to go the opposite direction, the opposite field. There's Campbell. He's going to score easily. Good read. Newer as outfielders were. He's a really good base. He knows how to play the game. Uh, uh, he's solid. So now it's Flores, the number eight hitter, two for eight in this series, including that three-run homer two nights ago that tied the game. And you see you're going to hold Lagaris on of course who stole a lot of bases late last year. But you know one last point about Juan he's been struggling. I would like to see him use right center field until he gets his stroke. Lagaris now seven for 20 on the homestand so. He has certainly. Perked it up over the last week after a struggle during the first road trip. Terry Collins was talking today about the long term plan. For Lagaris. He said don't be surprised if in a month. He's the leadoff hitter. Said again, as he did when we were in Washington to start the season, he just didn't want to put so much pressure on Lagares against those great Washington pitchers to start the year, Scherzer and Zimmerman and Strasburg. But that once he got a little more comfortable, there was every reason to believe that he would be back in that spot. I don't believe in babying the players. I throw them in the water, see if they can swim. He's got a good year under his belt, Lagares. Hit 281 last year. Too much coddling. Flores taps one foul. 0 and 2. And there's been no coddling of Juan Lagares regarding his defense. No, well. You he know threw what? Him in the deep end, and he learned to. He has made me, away. He's made me get off this monitor because, folks, we've we got a monitor in front of us, and we're supposed to watch the monitor, but also we can look over the monitor and see the field. But with. Flores strikes out for the second out of the inning. Well, as I was saying, here's my monitor, and that's the feed that you're seeing at home. And 
I have to look at it because I have to know what's going on, but I can look over and there's the field. Now, what I'm saying about Lagares is his lateral movement going left to right, he's like a blue streak going. It's making me get off this monitor when a ball's hit the, anywhere in the gaps or center field to watch him make these plays. He's remarkable. The Grom takes a strike. Well, I think the idea is for you to watch the monitor to see the pitch. Right. And then watch the field. Well, to see before what now, by. I used to have the monitor over to the right, remember? Well, you were being antisocial. Yeah, well, you were turning away from it. It took me a while to warm up to you. <laughs> <laughs> the crop bounce it away, and it's 0 2. Jacob looking for his first hit of the year. He's got 0 for 4 so far after hitting over 200 for his rookie year. From the top of the promenade at City Field. Another close to full house. There goes Lagaris. DeGrom pulls it right to Morse. Who grabs it out of the air for the third out. But the Mets strike first. First run of the game brought to you by Verizon Fios, the fastest, most reliable internet. Eric Campbell, single, stolen base, comes home on the Lagaris hit, and the Mets grab the early 1 0 lead. Or nothing. Oh, there you A lot go. of youngsters on hand. First Saturday night home game. Fireworks after the game. This is what I like to see. The youngsters at the ballpark. You can smile. Oh he's smiling all right. <laughs> what you got there a little pizza. That looks good. You could get us some of that. Jared Saltlamaki leads off against Jacob DeGrom in the third. DeGrom working with the lead for the first time gets a curveball in for a strike. Saltlamaki off to a very slow start, just two for 22, and has sat the last three days with JT Real Muto being called up. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens when Jeff Mathis, who was the backup, comes back from the DL. He has a broken finger. Because the Marlins love what they've seen from Mayo Muto. And Salta Lamaki, who had a rough year last year, off to a rough start this year. They gave him a lot of money, 21 million for three years, but you wonder what his future is now. Well, he's a better left hand hitter than a right hand hitter. He's a dead low ball hitter. 220 last year with 11 home runs, which was not what they had in mind. Well, they brought him over from Boston off the win world championship year, looking for hopefully a little leadership, but 
I just don't think that he was a uh, he was just a filler player over there. He had a nice year in Boston, but it's a big ballpark in Miami. Struck him out with a high fastball. That's number four for DeGrom, one down in the third. That's all where you got to pitch him. Just stay up in the letters all day long. He drops the back shoulder and he's uppercutting and he's not going to, he's going to have a hard time making contact. So from Salt de Lamacchia to Echeverria. 25 letters in those two. Is that right? I think it's 14 and 11. So 25 letters and 11 syllables between those two last names. Echeverria one for seven in the series and he takes a strike. I've been there. It's no fun when you're struggling like Salta Lamacchia. And you know Salta Lamacchia has been around a long time. He was a first round pick by the Braves 12 years ago. Right. Went to Texas. But he's only 29. You know it's not at a point in his career where things should be going backwards. Grom gets ahead on Echeverria one and two. Well, the Grom attacks hitters. This is what Ronnie, you and I like about him. He goes right after the hitters, gets in front. You pitch in one and two, oh and two, it makes your life a lot easier. Well, he has enjoyed pitching in his home ballpark. He's now made 11 starts at City Field in his career with a 1.56 ERA in his home ballpark. That is thriving. Just missed with a slider, three and two. And even better down the stretch last year and into this season. Three two coming. Echeverria floats one in the right field for a base hit. So there's the second hit for the Marlins against Jacob DeGrom. Pretty good hitting right there from Echeverria. Inside out. Sometimes you tip your hat. Well done. So one out and one on. Now the Mets will look for the bunt from Matt Latos. Lifetime 118 hitter. Has one sacrifice this year. We mentioned last night that the Marlins brought in Michael Morris, who grew up in Fort Lauderdale, hometown kid. Latos, likewise, a Miami kid. In fact, He's such a Miami kid that when the Marlins began play in 1993, he was five years old and he was there for the first ever game at Joe Robbie Stadium. Hmm. Duda makes the play on Latos and Echeverria down to second. Nice bunt. Well, D. Gordon's got himself uh, six RBI in this young season. 11th game, 12th game, excuse me, and six RBI from a leadoff hitter. You'll take that. And a bunt hit to lead off the game that survived a review. He's got Echeverria in scoring position with two out. So with two out and a runner at second, the Mets don't play the corners quite as far in. It was a good changeup to start him off. Nothing in one. High change. E. Gordon, second generation big leaguer. His dad was a guy with quite an arm, Tom Flash Gordon. You ever notice how many pitchers have kids who become position players? Yes. Don't ask me why. Everybody wants to play every day. He wants to show up dad because dad probably couldn't hit. <laughs> Murph made a run to the bag and DeGrom simply steps off. Yeah. 
so far in DeGrom starts and they've both been terrific. He hasn't had the consistency yet and we're only in the third start. Where he kept the ball down Gary so much. Uh, like I'd never seen before from a young pitcher. Getting the ball a little up. He, had, he got it up in spring training. And um, where last year it was extraordinary. Uh, how well he kept the ball down. There's his first two starts. And he wouldn't be complaining about that. Tough loss in Washington. Yeah, he gave up a lot of bleeders in his last start against the Phillies. Seven hits, all singles. Three of them to Freddie Galvis, the number eight hitter. Two and two to D. Gordon. We have Echeverria at second and two out. And he shoots that one foul. See where they got Kadir playing Gordon as if he's a, a right hand pull hitter. Really hugging that line. But Garris, as usual, playing a very shallow center field. Two and two to D. Gordon. Little tapper. Flores to his left. And he's out. Duda throws home just in case. But the first base umpire, Sean Barber, waited a beat and threw out, punched out Gordon. We'll see whether Mike Redmond is inclined to challenge this call. Mets trying to get a call on Gordon overturned in the first inning and couldn't. Very close. Bigger stretch, Lucas. Go out and get that ball. Mm. Close side base. They might decide to challenge. Tie base goes to the runner, and here's the play. Lucas very wisely continued the play. And they're going to challenge. Mike Redmond waited until his video guy told him that it was a play worth challenging, and so. We'll see if the inning continues. So two plays involving D. Gordon. The first one, he was ruled safe. The Mets challenged and it was upheld. Now he is ruled out. And this one might get overturned. And Lucas has got to get a bigger stretch on that ball. Now let me ask you a question. Echeverria never stopped coming around third base and Duda threw home just right. in case. But, you know, the Mets didn't bother putting a tag on him. So this is what I don't like. So about does the he go to go, go back to third or are they going to let him score? Maybe we can see the replay of it was their continuation home. I mean that's they're going to have to figure that out right the, I, uh, the I, replay officials the if, one if they overturn the call they have to figure out where to put Echeverria. It's Gordon saying he's safe which may well turn out to be the case. And let's watch Echeverria he never stopped. Now to his credit he's busting. I mean, he's busting with two outs. Now, Duda threw it home, but Darno says, "Well, well, he's plays, out. Plays over, he's out. You're why right. should I tag him?" Exactly. Right? So. And that's what I don't like about the replays. And he certainly could have tagged him. The ball was there in plenty of time to get him, had he decided to tag him. There you go. Gives you a complete overview. Ooh, it's that was there in plenty of time. Yep. So what's what's your obligation if you're Darno on that play? You're supposed to play for a fourth out. Oh, it certainly looks as though they could overturn this and call Gordon safe. So Lucas, fast runner, has got to go and get out there and get a good stretch, and that might be a play when it's a tie base to maybe cheat a little bit. But I don't know about cheating anymore with instant replay. With, with, with the challenges. I have to assume this is going to be overturned. Play under review brought to you by Mazda. KBB.com's lowest cost to own brand over five years. But I go back to what is Travis Darno's obligation on that play? Do you have to play for a fourth out? Well, I think it's all new, and the players are going to have to play it until it's it's till it ends. And but, they're just going to have to get used to it. But once you get the third out call, isn't that the end? Well, suppose he goes and I don't know. Makes I, the, suppose if, he goes and makes a if, tag. If they allow Echeverria to score, that is a travesty. It's a travesty. Yep. Right? Yes. Because Darno is reacting off the umpire calling Gordon out at first base. They have to send him back to third. I, I think. 
But first, well, we've had some, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that's why this is taking so long. It's not because of the play at first. It's obvious that 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 call should be overturned. Gordon's going to be safe. The question is what to do with Echeverria, and I'm sure that's what they're mulling over in the bunker in New York. This is going to be very interesting. They're going to see stop. what they do. Let's see. Okay, they safe. call safe. And he's going to go to third. Okay, so they're sending Echeverria back to third. So I, in my mind, Keith, they did the right thing. What do you think? In my mind, it's the right thing, too. But uh, <laughs> if you continue the play, he's going to be out at home when you're in the dugout. Right. If so the, if, so you know, if Travis had tagged him and he was out, then even if they overturned the call at first, would they have called that the third out? Those are very, very, very good questions, uh, Gareth. That's one of the it's part of the can of worms that replay opens up. This in baseball. is the one thing I don't like about right. the replay. So Gordon uses his speed for his second infield hit of the game. He had a bunt single in the first that survived replay and an infield hit here in the third because of replay. Now first and third and two out of Christian Yelich coming up. So the second time DeGrom has had to stand around through a long review process. We'll be very interested to, to hear any kind of explanation from the umpires about their thought process in sending Echeverria back. Yelich struck out his first time up and a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Of course, one of the provisions of the original replay rule last year was that if a player is influenced by an umpire's call to do something, then he shouldn't be penalized for it. And I think that's the provision that comes into play in a situation like that. In other words, Darno reacted because the umpire called Gordon out at first, and that his assumption was that the play was dead, so he shouldn't be penalized for that. I have a question for you if we can get another pitch out of this. Is Echeverria hustled the whole way? Mm -hmm. If Darno made the tag, continued right. the play, and he, because he was busting, it didn't, it didn't hold up because it was third. Would they call him out because he was hustling the whole way, and that's how the play would have transpired? Follow me. Now, if he made the turn and saw the out call, and then kind of trotted, then you'd have to put him back. But, but the fact that he busted so hard all the way home, if if Darno makes the tag, that's a legitimate. Progression if, of the play. If he's, you mean if he, he fall, if he beats it? No, if he's, if he's had, out, either way, whether gotta, he's out or safe. If he's out, you got to call him out, don't you? There's a good change up by Degrom, one and two to yell at Because and then, then it becomes a judgment because Echeverria hustled the whole way. Right. He didn't like see the out call and then kind of trot home and you know. It, right. It, so he, he was not influenced by the umpire. Correct. Ball, but Darno was. But if, so yes. Darno goes through with the play and tags him out. Then he's got to be out. Right. right. That's my that's my that's yeah. my thought. One two. But that's all conjecture in, in this case. I, I think they did the right job in splitting the yes. baby and sending him back to third. Yes. yes. But you know it's one of those imponderables in the game. There's not supposed to be four outs in an inning. <laughs> it's supposed to be three. Two and two to Yelich with Stanton on deck. Big pitch for DeGrom. Got him. Right. High fastball gets Christian Yelich for the second time. And DeGrom survives another delay and picks up his fifth strikeout of the night. He went upstairs to get Yelich. Keeps the mitts up 1 0.
Citi Field. They finally got the Empire State Building on a neutral color. <laughs> That's right. This week has been going. It should be an orange and blue, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, the Mets used their challenge and lost. The Marlins used the challenge and won. Terry Collins now out of challenges for the night. Mike Redmond has his back. But the Mets have the one nothing lead because each time, despite it going against the Mets, Jacob DeGrom was able to negotiate the inning. Now Curtis Granderson up to the second time. Flied out to the warning track and left his first time up. Granderson, Darno, and Duda facing Matt Latos in the third. Mm, good good change. change up by Latos, one and one. Curtis has been uh, struggling at the plate. Scored seven runs. Pulls that one toward the hole, but Gordon shuffles over and gets Granderson one away. So now Darno, who flied out to right his first time up. Boy, Darno's been involved in some very interesting plays in this early season <laughs> around the plate, hasn't he? Well, we've had uh, some uh, very, very tough. Uh, challenges in this home state. Well, not just that, but you know, he got run over by Andrelton Simmons yep. in Atlanta, which had not happened since they put in the new collision rule. He was the first catcher to really take a, a direct hit. Then he had that scramble at home plate in this series with Ichiro Suzuki, where he was called for having tagged Ichiro, but that got overturned and Ichiro got back to the plate and the run counted. And then this one, where he got the benefit of the doubt, I guess you'd say. After the uh, the call at first base seemed to end the inning, so uh, Darno's been a bit of a test case <laughs> through the early part of the year. Latos behind him, two and zero. Travis fly to right his first time up, and he launches one to deep left field. Forget it. That is long gone. Travis Darno with his second home run of the year, and it's 2 nothing New York. Well, Travis has hit two home runs this season, both at City Field, and they've both been line drives. The home draw home runs will come. He had 13 last year, most by a Met rookie catcher. And this is the first time. Gary, and you turn on a fastball and a pull the home run. Most of the time, it's a hanging slider. There's no doubt that, that ball's crushed. First home run, Latos is allowed this season. 2 0 New York. Now Duda, and he takes a strike. And we take a side view here with the perfect balance. But whenever you swing effortless, effortlessly, your wrists and hands come into play, and the ball just. What they call it? Air exit velocity? Exit velocity. There was some superb exit velocity on that home run. My favorite turn. Joking. I would say of all the balls we've seen hit in this series, that's the second best exit velocity. <laughs> because Stanton's double the other night. Yes. That was right at the top of the exit velocity chart. Yep. <laughs> One and two to Duda, who drilled a double down the right field line his first time up. Duda already with seven doubles. It's only the Mets' 12th game. Mm. All speed pitch by Latos strikes him out. Third strikeout for Latos, two out in the inning. By the way, some quick math indicates that Duda is on a pace for over 90 doubles this year. That would be a record. <laughs> yes. I think the record is still 67, isn't it? The Earl Webb record, which has been around forever. Is that American Leaguer too? Is he American Leaguer? I think someone has the record for the National League, if I'm correct. The Mets record of 44 doubles has stood forever. Um, Bernard Gilkey said it in 96, and it seems like a very low number. Well, that's not forever. But it, I, I just mean that there have been a lot of people who were on pace to break that record. And never got there. Murph has been on yep. pace for it. Wright has been on pace for it. But nobody's ever caught Gilkey's record. 
Bernard had that phenomenal year that one year, did he not? 317, 117 RBIs. Good guy. Kadire pulls one foul. That year, 96, the Mets had three players have extraordinary years. Huntley, uh, Tom Huntley set the Mets home run record at 41 that year. Lance Johnson had 227 hits, 27 doubles. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 21 triples. And the team stunk. And they were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 0-2 coming. And Kadire pokes one foul the other way. It's such a terrible term. It's like a stink. It stunk. Well, that's a long time ago. <laughs> like, you know, that's 19 years ago. Some of our fans weren't even alive then. How many years now, Metsy's? 50. This is 54. 54, right. Earl Webb, Boston, 1931, 67 doubles. Still the record. And what's the National League? 64, mark? Joe Medwick, 1936. I thought it Garden. was Joe Medwick. So both those records have stood for a long time. Of course, you know, those guys played in an era where you had some cavernous ballparks where there were more extra base hits to be had. Certainly, Earl Webb though playing at Fenway. 67 doubles is a lot, no matter what. No. no matter what ballpark you're in. One and two to Kadire. And he lays off the slider. Two and two. Well, I had uh, 48 doubles on most of my career in 79. That would have been a Mets record. Uh, in a yeah, in a very big <laughs> ballpark, Bush Stadium with AstroTurf. Right. And my blazing speed. Well, the AstroTurf helps too, right? More balls up the gap that way. Yeah, but I, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I was a gap hitter. Mm. Now tip and Salta Lamaki is able to hold it for a strike three. Fourth strike out for Latos. But Travis Darno's second home run of the year, both on this homestand, they have extended the Mets lead. Darno goes deep, and Jacob DeGrom and the Mets with a 2 0 lead after three. The David Wright schedule poster courtesy of City. After the game, all kids 12 and under can run the bases in the Mr. Met Dash. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Family Sundays. Giancarlo Stanton bats with the bases empty and lifts the first pitch to right. Granderson over toward the line. One pitch and one after Jacob DeGrom in the fourth. So he's handled Stanton so far tonight. And now Martin Prado. Prado took a call third strike his first time up and really got in the face of home plate umpire Gary Cedarstrom to complain about the call something you don't always see from Prado. A 
one thing you always see from Prado. He always likes. He always has the eye black on. He likes to. No, uh, you rarely see people wearing eye black at night. I agree. I never liked to wear the eye black. I always wanted to because when you were a kid, you saw the major league players wearing the eye black. Oh God, I can't wait. Gosh, I can't wait to. But you know what? I always I have high cheekbones, and I can always see the black when I was up at the plate. And it was a distraction for me, and um, I would go right in and take it off. But those high cheekbones—they were probably good for your acting career. You know, actually, the high cheekbones gave me a nice angle to follow the, to trace that ball and track the ball. <laughs> There's that too. This <laughs> is the O2 from Degrom. And a weak grounder for Murphy to handle. And quickly there are two out. So the Brom, who looked like he was a little bit off on his location early in the game, has really settled in nicely. Yes. And once again, and he's pitched two. This is third ball game, and I love that poster. Uh, oh, band that a what Phantom of the Opera mask? I, it's, I think it's the uh, Terminator. Ah. Uh, Arnold. Like the denominator. There's Michael Morris who grounded out to short his first time up. The Grom this pitch as I was saying he lost a 2 1 ball game he won 2 nothing. It's 2 nothing right now he's pitched in tight ball games. Mm -hmm. Well, as you'll remember, the start of his career as a Met was that game against the Yankees where he gave up one run and lost one nothing. In his first seven starts, he didn't get a win. Right. Because he was not getting much run support. I believe he got four L's, four Larry's. He was supposed to be here last year as a short term solution to work out of the bullpen. Yes. But once he got the ball and a chance to pitch in the rotation, it was impossible to take it away from him. And all he did was win National League Rookie of the Year honors and pick up so far this year where he left off. 1 2. Off the corner with the fastball at 95, 2 and 2 to Morris. I mean, all he did in the minor leagues was go 21 and 11. And all all as a starter. Mm. And he gets Morris looking for his sixth strikeout of the night. Another Marlin goes away grumbling. Six strikeouts and four innings for DeGrom. 15 and a third consecutive scoreless for Jacob.
One straight win, and they've got a 2 0 lead against the Marlins tonight. Jacob DeGrom has kicked it in gear, struck out six over the first four innings. Gave up a two run homer to Ryan Zimmerman in his first inning of the year and has not allowed a run since. Daniel Murphy leads off against Matt Latos in the home for it. Murphy, Campbell, and Ligaris for the Mets. We've got a run in the second on a Ligaris RBI hit and a run in the third on a Travis Darno home run. Murphy had a run scoring double in the game last night, but still trying to get on track. If you date back to last season now, Murphy's gone 19 straight games without a multiple hit game. And for him, multiple hit games are like air. He looks like he's saying something's a distraction to him. Not sure what they're oh, looking at. Now they're at. having fun. The apple's down. There's no advertising on the batter's eye. I guess everything's okay. Murph's been under the ball. The ball away has been giving him trouble. He's been hitting a lot of fly balls uh, to left field. They've been throwing them away, and he's been lifting. And he's just got to make that's that's a minor adjustment. Eric Campbell waiting on deck. Shallow right, and Stanton comes in. Murphy retired one away. So one out and nobody on now Eric Campbell who was single to left stole a base and scored the first run of the second. Campbell starting his fourth straight game after coming up from Las Vegas where he gotten off to a great start. Facing Matt Latos who's. Given up two runs and three and a third, but you have to say this is as well as he's pitched early in the season. Didn't last the first inning in his first start. Got through four innings, gave up three runs in his second start. But walked three in that game. Hasn't walked anybody tonight. But he's behind on Campbell 2 0. Well. <clears throat> Well, Latos's motion what right over the top watch him with his pitching hand go all the way down almost a little wiggle and then he comes right over the top which makes his fastball fairly true by true I mean straight mm. which at you know 90 miles an hour can be a problem right you got to locate and uh, he's got an over the, a 12 to 6 curveball as, as a result too he's had Knee problems. He's had elbow problems the last 18 months. He was limited to 16 starts with the Reds last year. That's strike three and two. So he's a, he's kind of at a crossroads in his career. He's only 27, but he may already be at that point where he needs, needs to make that adjustment from being a power pitcher. Three two coming to Campbell, and he fouls away the fastball. Speaking of pitchers who come over the top, you see who had the first complete game in the majors this year. Probably not the guy everybody had in the pool. Josh Colmetter of the Diamondbacks. Uh, complete game against the Giants last night. Giants are struggling. Eight in a row the Giants have lost. You know why? It's the off the year. Odd year. There's ball four to Campbell. First walk given up by Latos, and Campbell's off for the second time tonight. The Giants in their eight game losing streak have been outscored 43 to 15. The longest losing streak in eight years. Here's Juan Lagares, who singled in the first run of the game. Humpback liner into center field to chase on Campbell in the second. And Campbell, who stole the base first time he got aboard, it will draw the attention of Latos. Speaking of happenings on the West Coast, you see what Mike Trout accomplished last night in his 100th career home run. Now has over 100 homers and 100 stolen bases, the youngest player ever to reach 100 homers and 100 steals. Well, no, well, he's to me is the the finest talent 
in the finest swing. And five tool player that's come down the pike in a, in, a, in a long, long time. What's interesting to me about Trout this year is that he's made a pretty significant adjustment. He was a guy like yourself who would often take the first pitch and put himself in a hole. And last year, especially in the second half, they were getting him out with high fastballs. Now he's attacking earlier in the count, which is a pretty significant adjustment for a young player. Seems as though that's a trend in baseball, especially after watching the Giants and the Royals last year and all the success they had getting to the World Series. Teams are being a little bit more aggressive earlier in the count. Well, we're getting back to. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to use the term old school. It's just how the game should be played. I mean, I don't like the last at bat. You have uh, Campbell had a 3 1 count. And he took 3 1 fastball inside. I want him swinging the bat. And maybe that's a 3 1 pitch. Okay, I can look inside and maybe try to 3 to 1, 3 and 1. Look for something to drive inside like Darno. Broken bat looper. Falling fast. Base hit. And Ligaris is 2 for 2. One of the shades of a Willie Mays here. I see Mays hit so many times, butt flying out, and Willie letting go with one hand. And if Mr. Mays is listening somewhere, I've seen him do that with one hand and turn the wind around at Candlestick blowing in from left field. I just Mays was so strong. So Lagaris aboard for the second time. Campbell at second, Lagares at first, Wilmer Flores the batter. Flores struck out his first time up. By the way, we've gotten uh, the notes on the overturn call in which the Marlins got a base hit for D. Gordon. And according to the replay officials, it's as we suspected. They did not allow Echeverria to score because of the incorrect call that affected the subsequent right. behavior of the defensive player in this case Darno who didn't put on the tag thinking the inning was over. And that is part of the replay rule. Gordon makes a dash for the bag. Latos ignores him. Double play oh. ball but it comes up on Echeverria and everybody's safe. Well it looked like a double play off the bat but a bad hop ate up Echeverria it'll be an infield hit for Flores to load the base and this was a bad hop that ate Echeverria up good reaction gets in front and look at that ball come up that was an ending ending double play and like there's the bad hop now this is what we said last night here Mets are red hot everything's going their way. Miami struggling. Things go the other way. They're getting all the breaks right now. Things are falling for them. And you know that's what happens when you're red hot. And you know what? You make your own breaks. So a chance for DeGrom with the bases loaded and one out. See if he can do as well as Bartolo Colon. DeGrom lined out to the first baseman his first time up. Jacob's career at the plate got off to a tremendous start. He had four hits in his first five big league at bats, but going back to last August, he's now old for his last 16. Granderson on deck. And the ground lifts one in foul ground. And that'll go into the seats. One and one. Team really struggling in the early portion of this year. That Latos is yet to get past a fourth inning. And trying to get through this one. One and one to DeGrom. Mm -hmm. Curveball well up high. Two and one. Here's a nice pitch to hit. 
Campbell at third he walked Lagares at second he had a base hit. Flores at first he had the bad hop base hit. And the Mets trying to take advantage. Nothing hit hard in this inning. Comebacker Latos comes home with it. Saltalamaki is relay in the dirt but scooped out by Morris to retire the side. Morris not noted for his glove at first but that's a big scoop for Morris to complete the one two three double play and get Latos through the inning. Gary this is a very difficult pick in between hop. Wow. Two run score if it goes down the right field line. Well, the Lamaki threw a palm ball and Morris really bailed him out. Still two nothing Mets. Wow. At 96 miles an hour, and Matt Latos at 92. And DeGrom has a 2 0 lead as we go to the fifth inning. No face Marcelo Zuna leading off in the fifth. Ozuna grounded out to Duda his first time up. That's the best slider he's thrown tonight, and it was a ball, but it was a good downward tilt. That one over at the knees for a strike. And it's one and one to Ozuna, who's 0 for 4 in this series and has looked a little bit lost at the plate. Salta Lamaki on deck. And Ozuna fouls off the fastball one and two. Ozuna is all messed up at the plate. He is just starting way too quick. Here's the one two struck him out high fastball for DeGrom his seventh strikeout. Up the ladder. He just chasing bad pitches. He is a mess. So DeGrom continues to dominate. He's given up just three singles tonight. Now he faces Salt to Lamaki, who he struck out his first time up. So DeGrom continues to excel on the mound, and you know, when you achieve some level of success, you inspire artistic renderings. Some guys get posters, some guys get bobbleheads. The Mets are doing something a little different with Jacob DeGrom. This is the Jacob DeGrom Garden Gnome. Which will be given away two weeks from tonight when the Mets play the Nationals on May 2nd. Very nice. See that gnome up close. 
Oh, you're doing the full turn? Oh, you see the back. He's got the 48. He's got the ball in his hand here, folks. <laughs> I like the hat. I like the hat, too. <laughs> Very nice. I mean, that's something special, right? The Jacob deGrom Garden Gnome. First 15,000 fans through the gates on May 2nd get that. I think Jake should be honored. Hi. How many guys get their own gnome? <laughs> <laughs> Salt Lamakia punches one in the left center. And Ligaris over to grab it under a two out. <laughs> you could be a runway model. <laughs> great skills there. Showing off the hardware. <laughs> I'm putting putting him back in his box now. With his little hat and his sunglasses. Did you break the box? No, I didn't know. Very careful. I cut my nails today, that's why I couldn't get the in the crease. Okay, Jake, you settle back in there. See you in two weeks. <laughs> and Javaria fouls went away. Well, the closest that DeGrom has come to giving up a run tonight was Echevarria coming home on D. Gordon's ground ball that appeared to end the third inning but did not. The out call was made at first. The Mets allowed Echevarria to come home without tagging him. And after they reviewed the play and Called Gordon safe. They send Echeverria back to third. DeGrom handles Echeverria's ground ball and has got himself a 1 2 3 inning. Jake's now retired seven in a row. Halfway through at City Field, 2 0 New York. That's all then at the top of the batting order in the fifth inning. That means Curtis Granderson. We check in with Steve Gelb. Steve? Well, Gary, Curtis Granderson off to a rough start at the plate. Very similar batting average wise to the start last year at this time through 11 games. We're going to show you some numbers right now. The batting average is almost identical. This isn't including tonight, but if you go deeper into the numbers, the Mets really believe that he's just on the verge of coming out of it, having some balls starting to fall for two reasons. If you look at the middle two lines there, he's swinging and missing about a fifth of the amount of times that he was last year at this time. 3.4 percent this year versus just over 15 percent last year. His line drive rate is almost twice what it was last year at this time. So the Mets believe the balls just aren't falling at this point. And they're confident because him and Kevin Long did a ton of work in the offseason, basically remaking his swing. Last year, he had a lot of moving parts, was very rhythmic in his swinging, and therefore couldn't get to where he wanted to be. And they're right there, another line drive that's caught. That's the type of start that Curtis Granderson's been having. But he couldn't get to where he wanted to be 
as easily or as consistently as he has to. This year they've taken all of that off and he just starts his swing right where he wants to be. Kevin Long told me I've never seen him react to so many pitches and be in a good spot to do it. He's short to contact now can make better split second decisions and if he stays with it it's just a matter of time. Well, I got Rob there on a terrific play by D Gordon but I think the most important piece of that Keith is. He's making more contact. I mean, he's not swinging and missing. He's not striking out. And, you know, he's become more of a contact hitter. He's hitting some tough luck. There's no question about it. I just don't know about retooling a swing on a major league player. You can change a philosophy. Your swing's your swing. You can make a little bit of tinkering, but not remaking a swing. Uh, the hits will come with Curtis. They'll come. That was Darno drilled a home run his last time up his second of the year. I, I guess to me the biggest question about Granderson is not about the batting average because he has hit a lot of line drives. The question is, with the approach he's taking right now, is he going to hit for power? That's a good point. I mean, yeah. he's a guy who's hit 40 home runs he a couple has, of times. He's yet to get an extra base hit mm -hmm. so far this year. Well, the 40 home runs are not going to happen in this ballpark, even with the fences in, um, brought in this year. But certainly 20, but we'll see. Latos behind three and one. And Darno dribbles one. That's a fair ball. And Salt Lamacchia oh. throws him out. Morris was off the bag, had to Jeez. tag it with his glove. And that's the second out. Oh, inexperience. People playing out of position. Not a good throw again from Salt Lamacchia. Uh, you got to be on the bag. <laughs> wow, I've never seen that. It's usually the way you go about it. You know what? You like Joaquin said, you never know. Stick around and watch long enough. There's always something you've never seen before in this game. So due to bats with two out and nobody on. One for two on the night. Drilled a double back in the first. Wasn't that bad a throw? More said well, the reason to be all. It wasn't that. a great throw, but at least he didn't bounce it. Marlins switch positions in the shift after the first pitch to Duda. They've been doing this the whole series, and it just doesn't seem to make much sense. It's not that they're changing the shift, but they take the third baseman Prado from the left side to the right side. And he switches positions with Echeverria after the first strike to Duda. He's done it every time dude has been up in this series. That's a very now the lone infielder on the left side. I mean did they think that they're leaving Prado on that side because he's a third baseman in case dude has tried to bunt and then they figure with one strike he's not going to bunt. Maybe that's it. You know that makes that actually makes some sense. Maybe that's it. But where he was playing, I don't think it would make that much of a difference. If Duda agree. wanted to bunt, he still would have bunked. One hundred percent agree with you, Gary. Curveball ball from Latos in for a strike, and it's two and two. Latos has pitched a Duda pretty tough here. Double his first at bat, struck him out the last at bat on a backdoor over the top curve. This is the deepest Latos has gone into a game this year. Lasted four in his last start against the Braves. Mm. Fought off a pretty tough pitch right there, down and in slider. Jose Urania is up in the Marlins bullpen. Good fastball inside, Duda. We had a terrific cut. Good location. Stays in the at bat. Oh, and Bar uh, Mr. Cedarstrom got shot off the bicep. Did you see the um, the umpire in the Nats Phillies game today? I think it was Brian Knight behind the plate take a direct hit from yes. a pitch. It was missed by the catcher. He had to leave the game. Check swing 
And he went around for strike three. So Duda is out on strikes for the second time. Five strikeouts for Latos, and he has his first one, two, three inning of the night. We played five to nothing New York. Day tomorrow. Enough said. Back on SNY, 12:30. The coverage: Mets and Marlins. Matt Harvey against Tom Kohler. We start the sixth inning, and we start with a pinch hitter for the Marlins. Reed Brignac batting for Matt Latos. Grounds the first pitch down to Duda. He handles it easily. One pitch and one out for Jacob Degrom in the sixth. Well, Degrom has now gone 16 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings, which is the longest of his brief career. Last time he gave up a run was his first inning of the season when he yielded a two run homer to Ryan Zimmerman. And he's yielded nothing since. This guy's been a pest for DeGrom tonight. D. Gordon with a couple of infield hits, a bunt single in the first, a grounder to short that turned into an infield hit in the third, and both were subject to review as he bluffs the bunt this time. Gordon was called safe in the first inning, and the Mets challenged. And the call was upheld. He was called out in the third inning, and the Marlins challenged, and the call was overturned. So DeGrom was given up only one other hit, trying to get Gordon out for the first time. And a full swing by Gordon. On the change up one and one. Check the count 0 oh and 2 to Gordon. They call that first pitch a strike that went to the backstop. Did they say he offered at it? Yes, they did. I guess so. Now the home plate umpire corrects the count. It is one and one. And that's outside. Now it's two and one. See, Buck caught up. Nice job by the bug operator. <laughs> the bug is the little score thing in the top left corner. It's not everybody's as well versed in TV talk as we are. <laughs> Mission Heats on Marlins box score. D. Gordon with the two infield hits. Danny Echeverria with a base hit, and that's been it. Rom has not walked the batter. He struck out seven. Driven to left, Kadire will have to play it on a hop. And Gordon has his third hit of the night. Well, he's got 
DeGrom solved. Wants a fastball in, he missed up and away. Nice hitting. So take me inside Mike Redmond's head here. You're down two runs in the sixth inning. You're not doing much. You've got the best base dealer in the league on first. Do you think about running here down by a couple of runs Stanton on deck. How does that all factor in. Um, I would keep a green light for. Uh, Gordon. I do like the fact that the holes open for Yelich. You know, with Lucas Duda holding the runner on, it leaves a big hole between first and second. Yet he steals the base, that takes that away. And you've got that guy in the on deck circle. And you have Travis Darno behind the plate, has already thrown Gordon out, trying to steal twice in this series. Now DeGrom behind on Yelich, 3 0. So things becoming dicey very quickly for DeGrom with Stanton standing on deck. Missing up and away too. Which is a sign he's dropping his arm. Elbow I should say. Only his third three ball count of the night and he pours one over for a strike. And 77 pitches for Jake who threw 99 against the Phillies in the home opener on Monday. 3 1 coming, and Yelich swings through the fastball. 3 and 2. Yelich, he, just, he is just dropping that back shoulder. And the first two strikeouts are pitches right about there, a little higher. You can see he's under it. Yelich just 1 for 10 in the series after missing a couple of games with back problems. Rounds one. Murphy was moving to the bag for some reason. And Yelich has a hit. It was a Taylor made double play ball. Gordon was not running, but for some reason, Murphy was moving towards second base and took himself out of the play. I don't. I've never seen a player uh, do peculiar things like Murph. I just. It's befuddling. So that means the tying runs are on base. And John Carlos Stanton is striding to the plate. Gordon at second, Yelich at first, and one out. Uh, if you got Deke on a fake on the steal, uh, that shouldn't happen. Got plenty of time to get to the bag. He was, oh well. So well, let's see if DeGrom can overcome that. He should be in the dugout right now. Instead, he's got to face Stanton with two men on. Stanton has struck out and flight out tonight, 0 for 2. That's up 2 0 in the sixth. And Stanton takes below the knees, ball one. Struck out Stanton the first at bat in the first inning on sliders. Nasty away. Second at bat, he swung at the first pitch, fastball, and flew out weakly to right. DeGrom behind 2 0. Living dangerously. He was behind Yelich 3 0, got back to 3 2 before Yelich hit that ground ball that somehow went for a base hit. Two zero. Three 0. Oh boy, do you give this big slugger a hit sign? How can you not? <laughs> So you got to keep the ball. If you keep the ball away, this guy will hit it out, out of the out of the ballpark of the right center field. Done that twice already in this series. Against G and against Cologne. 3-0 from Degrom. Mm. He takes it. Three and one. You don't know, folks, if he had the hit sign or not. Some hitters just don't like to hit three and zero. Two on, one out, three and one to Stanton. 
Mm. And he pops one up, coming back Darno for a look, but that's out of play. Well, got away one changeup. Got away with a hang. Good pitch to hit. Look at the third base coach here, Gary. You, there Butler. was a rule; they got to be in the box. I mean, you can, from the dugout, make him get back in there. It's a scary place to be, also with Stanton at the plate. That's uh, that. That's I've never seen that. Degrom, second straight at bat, has worked his way from three and zero to three and two. He struck him out. Huge strikeout for Jacob DeGrom, his eighth of the night as he comes from 3 0 to get Stanton two down. Well, we'll do a pitch sequence here. Slider, not a good one, just missed. Another slider, not a good one, just missed. Fastball in, missed. Fastball down the middle, 3 0. Change up, that was the one to hit. And he comes inside and runs that high rider off the plate, and Stanton swung out. It was ball four. Now two out and two on for Martin Prado. And Prado takes a strike. Rough night so far for Stanton. 0 for 3, two strikeouts. Prado is struck out and grounded out 0 for 2. There's a tough out right here. Prado shoots one foul and now it's 0 and 2. Well, I think Stanton was surprised that he came in after him. I think Stanton was probably looking for something in and got just tied up. And you know what? Tip my hat to Mr. DeGrom. That was his pitch selection. I love it. He's aggressive. Now a chance to get himself out of trouble ahead on Prado 0 and 2. Popped up. Duda coming over. He's got room. Side retire. Juan Lagares with a couple of hits has driven in a run. Travis Darno with a home run tonight. And the Mets with a 2 0 lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Jacob DeGrom had to sidestep trouble because Daniel Murphy was out of position on what turned into a base hit for Yelich. And Murph doing some mea culpas in the dugout. Murph will be up second in the inning. Rookie right hander Jose Ureña is on in relief for the Marlins. Ureña was in the minor leagues till five days ago. Made a start in AAA and then was called up. 
And this will be his second big league appearance. Michael Dyer went 0 for 2 against Matt Leto, struck out both at bats, and he drives this one center field, chasing Ozuna back, way back, and beyond his glove. It's in play off the top of the wall. Kadair will pull him at second base with a leadoff double. A 400 foot double for Michael Kadair. Not to beat a dead horse, but how many times have we seen net hitters jump on first pitch fastball? It wouldn't have happened last year. So 23 year old Jose Ureña is greeted, greeted rudely. And now Daniel Murphy will try and cash in Kadir. Murphy's grounded out and flight out 0 for 2. Over and in. This point in the game right here, you're getting in the bottom of the six. Minimum, you really got to be focusing on a ball that you can you want to drive in the runner, but you've got to get him over. It's a big run out there. Continue, continuing theme in this series has been the Marlins starters inability to go deep into games. Jared Cosart five and a third on Thursday night. David Phelps four and two thirds last night. Matt Latos leaving after five innings tonight. And so they're into the bullpen again in the sixth. And Murphy hits one toward the middle. Echevarria flashes over. That'll serve to advance the runner. Kadir to third with one out. Murph's not very far off. Well done. That they had him defended up the middle. This ball's ripped. Hang with him. But he gets the runner over. Critical. Murphy did that last night as well in the sixth inning, and Campbell delivered a sacrifice fly. In fact, Campbell's had a sixth inning sacrifice fly each of the first two games of this series, and he's got a chance for another. The infield comes in, Kadir at third with one out. And he's delivered twice. I like this kid. I like the way he swings. He stays level, Gary. He's got a good eye at the plate, he's aggressive. That was kind of felt for him. He didn't make the ball club. Well, he certainly was expected to, but he drives one the other way, a base hit. So once again, Campbell comes through with a runner at third with less than two out. This time driving in Kadir with a base hit. That's three nothing New York. Beautiful. Look at this level swing, folks. Outer half. Going the other way. Mid thigh. Just good hitting. Sweet. Now Campbell on base for the third time tonight. Two hits, a walk, now an RBI. He's had a stolen base along the way, and Ureño will keep an eye on him. Meanwhile, Juan Lagares at the plate is two for two tonight. Hasn't hit the ball particularly hard either time, but he had an RBI single in the second, then broke his bat and picked up a base hit in the fourth. The Marlins into the bullpen fairly early again, and their mm. bullpen has been the worst in the National League. Their pitching staff overall has had the worst ERA in the National League through the first 11 games. Lagares mm. pops one straight up. So the Lamakia tracks it, and that's the second out. So two way. Let's check in with Steve Gelb. Steve. Well, he popped up here, but uh, yesterday was the big day for Juan Lagares. He received his official Gold Glove Award and made two spectacular plays in the outfield. But guys, for Lagares, the real Gold Glove, that was just gravy because in the spring, his teammates presented him with these Gold Gloves, which he keeps hanging by his locker. Bit of a gag gift from the guys. I asked Juan yesterday if he's used them at all, and he said, no, he's, he's got to protect that right arm. Can't mess around with that. <laughs> That's, that's pretty cool. I think that's in the standard contract, right? No <laughs> boxing? Yes, uh, could be. Along with uh, skiing and skydiving. skydiving and automobile racing. 
Flores hits one to deep left field. Yelich back to the track. Yelich at the wall. It's out of here. Wilmer Flores with a two-run homer. Second home run of the series for Flores and the Mets have opened up a 5-0 lead. Fastball, right down the pipe, belt high, hardly any follow-through to Wilmer's swing. He's got pop. Yelich runs out of real estate. DeGrom hits one under Urania's glove, but Gordon is there to play it. Side retired, but the Mets pound the young pitcher in his second big league appearance. RBI single for Campbell, two run homer for Flores, and now the Mets up 5 0 after six. Donaldson homered in the bottom of the 10th as the Blue Jays beat the Braves. Cubs blew a four run lead in the ninth, but won in 11. Chris Bryant got on base five times today. Cardinals behind Carlos Martinez beat the Reds five to two. And tonight, Ryan Braun hitting leadoff for the Brewers for the first time in his career. They're two and eight, and they may be two and nine by the end of the night. And later on, the Dodgers and Rockies, Diamondbacks and Giants. Jacob DeGrom now in the five run lead as he takes them out for the seventh. Michael Morris will lead off. And Morris flies one foul. Nothing in one. That's to get the bullpen cranking with DeGrom on the verge of 90 pitches. Eric Adell, the right hander. Sean Gilmartin, the left hander. You know, it's interesting. Jay Reese Familia has saved five games during this six game winning streak for the Mets. He had a day off after the first three saves and the Mets didn't have a save opportunity. They won that game six to one against the Phillies. Little looper into shallow right and there's Granderson to grab it one away. And after saving the last two, Familia has the day off again today. And perhaps there won't be a save opportunity to present itself. You talked about little things going right during a winning streak. Yep. That's just another one. And it's also a perfect game here. You got five runs, give a little cushion. Where you can get Goodell and Gil Martin and, and uh, get him get them some uh, some action. They've been kind of idle out there in the bullpen. Have been used in a while. Not only is Collins going to sto stay away from Familia, he's also going to not use Jerry Blevins tonight. Here's Marcelo Zuna, who's 0 for 2, grounded out and struck out, and a good slider by Degrom to start him off. Nothing at one. Boy, Ozuna just looks lost. 
On the other flip side, Gare Ciszek, the closer for Miami, hasn't had a, a, an opportunity to save a ball game. That's through the hole, a base hit for Ozuna, his first hit in the series, and the sixth single of the night against Degrom. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Tom Warner Cable. Enjoy more shows on more screens. Tom Warner Cable enjoy better. So Zuna is aboard with a one out single. 92 pitches for DeGrom who threw 99 on Monday. Salt Lamacchia has struck out and ground and a fly down. Mets put on the full shift against him. They flip Campbell over to the right side of the infield. And a knee high strike on the outside corner. Flores alone on the left side. Campbell in between Murphy and Duda on the right side. Salta Lamacchia just two for 24 on the season after hitting 220 last year. Two for 20, Gary, against right handers with a home run. And to throw one positive in there. Well, you know, you said it before, he, he's become an all or nothing hitter. And that's a hard ballpark in Miami to be an all or nothing hitter. Yep. Echeverria on deck. And DeGrom gets even two and two. Salt Lamakia pulls it past Duda, but right there is Campbell to play it, and they get the out at first. Well, the shift paid off there. The ball ate up Duda, but Campbell, the third baseman, flipped over to the right side there to make the play. Serious overload over there. We've seen it so many times. They're going to give an assist to Duda, so it's a 3 5 3 put out, which is almost impossible. Yes, because Campbell, of course, is a third baseman not playing third base. Got to find a different way of scoring those plays. I don't think I never felt that a ball tip like that should be an assist. I, I just thought I think it's a flaw in the scoring. Why would you get an assist on that? But I don't make the rule. Well, sometimes they don't give an assist if they feel as though. The deflection did not help the play be made. Right. In other words, if he had inadvertently tipped it and it didn't go to the right spot, they wouldn't give an assist. Right. So if a ball hit back, we normally see it with pitchers, a ground right. ball back to the pitcher. He deflects it to the second baseman where it would have been a base hit. Okay. But really, is it worthy of an assist? Well, think of the inadvertent deflection in hockey. If your stick happens to be in the right place and it hits your stick and goes in the goal, they still give you a goal. Well, yeah. Picky, picky. <laughs> Brad Hand. Let's up get Howie over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the expert on that. DeGrom trying to get through the seventh. Two out of Zuna at second. Echeverria at the plate. One two lifted to right Granderson back a long way back onto the warning track side retire seven scoreless innings for Jacob DeGrom 18 and a third he has gone without allowing a run rookie of the year maybe the sophomore of the year seventh inning stretch five nothing New York.
Honda dealer. Day game tomorrow to close out this series with Matt Harvey on the mound. Then a day off before the Braves are in for three, and then the Mets go to Yankee Stadium next weekend. Curtis Granderson grounds the first pitch at the bottom of the seventh to D. Gordon. One pitch and one out for Jose Ureña in the bottom of the seventh. Big crowd, fireworks after the game, plenty to cheer for the Mets fans tonight. Mets trying to go to 6 and 0 at home to start the season for the first time since 1985. Uh, I remember that year. Mets trying to win seven games in a row for the first time since 2010. Jacob DeGrom contributing seven scoreless innings tonight. And this guy's contributed a home run. That's a bit two home runs tonight. Darno a solo shot in the third. Wilmer Flores a two run homer in the sixth. One and one to Darno. Lucas Duda waits on deck. Jose Ureña in his second big league appearance, 23 years old, and he got tagged for three runs in that sixth inning. No, he's just another hard thrower and uh, the great arm, but too many pitches down the old pipe. First pitch he threw, Michael Kadir hit at 400 feet to center for a double. Campbell drove in a run with a hit, and then Wilmer Flores hit one in to the party porch in left field. Sean Gil Martin getting ready to pitch the eighth inning for New York. So DeGrom going seven scoreless innings tonight. Jacob has now made 12 career starts at City Field. His home ERA is 1.43. <laughs> okay. That's just crazy. Popped up. Salta Lamacchia under it. And retires Darno two away. I mean, 1.43. That's like docket Shea. It's um, up there with the stars. Gave up a two run homer to Ryan Zimmerman his first inning of the year. He's got 18 in the third scoreless inning since then. Here's Duda who doubled down the right field line back in the first struck out twice since then. During a five game hitting streak, Duda is nine for 20 with seven extra base hits. <laughs> and you know what? Duda came into spring training with all the questions can you hit left handers? Can you repeat the, the year you have? We've all gone through that when you have your first good year. I'm so happy to see him. And there's the big switch again on the infield after a strike. Prado going over to the second. To the right side of the infield. Off speed pitch from Arena, one and two. So Lucas basically the hot start, putting a lot of the doubters to bed. Got to keep it up. Who would doubt him now? Thirty home runs last year, but looks like a better hitter this year. Just one home run so far. Through his first 45 at bats, and nobody's complaining. Just got a piece of that changeup. Two and two. Michael Kadire would be next. He got that big third run, a three run, the sixth inning started with a leadoff double to center. Kadire. One to left. Should be easy for Yelich, the gold glover. And that retires the side. Mets are down one, two, three in the bottom of the seventh. They'll go to the bullpen for the eighth. Mets leading the Marlins 5 0.
Video recap number one, Travis Darno, second home run of the year. Video recap number two, Wilmer Flores, second home run of the year. Let's see a theme. Yes. That's with two home runs tonight, and nine home runs for the season in their first 12 games. Jacob DeGrom has done the rest. And the Mets looking for their seventh straight win will hand it off to Sean Gilmartin for the eighth. Rule five guy from the Twinkies. Twins, excuse me. Hasn't pitched since Tuesday when he gave up a home run to Chase Utley. First base runner he allowed in the major leagues. Jeff Baker pinch hitting takes outside from Gilmartin for ball one. Got a big breaking ball likes his likes his breaking ball. Guy was a starter in the minor leagues. Rule five draft means he was not on the 40 man roster in the offseason for the Twins. And the Mets took him, but have to keep him on the major league roster all year or put him through waivers and then offer him back to his original team. Now you can work out a deal with the original team. In other words, the Mets could send some compensation to the Twins, which would then make it okay. For the Mets to send Gil Martin to the minors at some point. And with the Mets having to make some bullpen moves over the next few weeks, that may that issue may arise. They've got Vic Black, who moved to Binghamton on his rehab assignment today and threw an inning. And Black may be back in less than a week. And Bobby Parnell a little bit further down the pike a couple of weeks away. And that's ball four, so Baker draws a leadoff walk. First walk, Gil Martin's allowed in the major league. Five run lead, he can't do that. And there's the motion, pretty upright. No movement with his glove hand, just stays right at the belt. He's not a drop and drive guy, that's for sure. He's got to throw strikes here. I can't take my eyes off his stirrups. Buddy Carlisle <laughs> up in the Mets bullpen. So here is D. Gordon, who went three for three against Jacob DeGrom tonight. A bunt single, an infield hit, and then a hard single to left. So Gordon, who had been one for eight in the first two games of the series, having a good night tonight. Marlins need traffic on the bases. You got Gordon at the plate, then Yelich, and then Stanton. And Gil Martin helping him out, falling behind 2-0. So Gil Martin needs to find the strike zone. And does. Two and one. Fourth big league appearance for Sean. Driven to left. Kadire won't get it, and it's all the way back to the wall. Baker to third. He'll be waved around by Brett Butler and score on the RBI double off the bat of D. Gordon. Gordon's fourth hit of the night gets the Marlins on the board. The Met lead is cut to five to one. Fourth double of the year for Gordon, his seventh RBI. Nice hitting fastball away. Goes right with it. This young man has the ability to go naturally to the opposite field. Pitchers, when always they fall behind, they like to go away. It's a, they feel safe. And there's Baker on his horse. A very aggressive call by third base coach Brett Butler with his team down five runs. Well, Gil Martin will get one more batter with Christian Yelich coming up. Yelich one for three on the night. It was a gift hit. Should have been a double play ball, but Murphy moved out of position and Yelich. Got his first base hit of the night. You got the right hand hitters coming up behind Yelich, Stanton, Prado, and Morris. And so Buddy Carlisle will, in all probability, be brought on. And the curveball knocked down by Darno. It rolls behind the hitter. Gordon almost got trapped off second and then goes back. You certainly don't want to get thrown out with your team down four runs in the eighth inning. Nice block. Hit the home plate and came up. Doesn't know. Nope. Don't want to do I that. I don't think so. Safety first. 
Dan Worthen is out at the mound to talk with young Sean Gilmartin. A walk, a ringing double, a curveball in the dirt, and a one sided conversation. D. Gordon, four for four tonight. The rest of the team, not so much. Yelich has had a tough time of it tonight. He got the base hit. That should have been a uh, double play in the sixth with Murph for an inexplicably shifted out of position. One on one to Yelich. Stanton looming on deck. It's secure knowing that Stanton no matter what happens can't tie the game. Two and one now to Yelich. Get to City Field Saturday May 2nd when the Mets take on the Nats at 710. The first 15,000 fans will receive the Jacob deGrom Garden Gnome courtesy of Gold's Horseradish. For tickets visit Mets.com slash Super Saturdays. And that breaking ball in for a strike, and now it's two and two to Yelich. DeGrom went seven, allowed no runs and six hits, no walks, eight strikeouts, 101 pitchers, lowered his season ERA through three starts to 0 0.93. <laughs> well, this is his signature pitch. It's a good curveball right there. Swing and a miss. He got him with the breaking ball. Third time Yelich has been struck out tonight. And that's the first down of the inning. And that's going to be all for Sean Gilmart. Yelich just does not look good at the plate. So Gilmartin, after giving up a walk and a double, gets the strikeout of Yelich. And now he'll exit in favor of Buddy Carlisle with John Carlos Stanton coming up. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the. Buddy Carlock comes up and in with his first pitch to Giancarlo Stanton. Which is kind of interesting because Stanton, there's Carlisle's numbers. I love him. He throws strikes. Stanton got hit in the head, in the face mm -hmm. last uh, September. 
That's why he's wearing that guard. Mike fires fastball, felled him, and ended his season. Gordon at second and one out, a run home for the Marlins here in the eighth. Carlisle on for the first time since Tuesday, and he goes up and away 2 0. But he's allowed just one base runner through two and a third innings in the early season. Picked up a save on opening day in Washington, the first of his career. The 37 year old pitching better than ever and facing Stanton for the first time ever. And he gets the rare slider in for a strike. Carlisle, the guy who comes in throwing fastball. Martin Prado on deck. Marlins one run, seven hits. The Mets five runs and nine hits as the Mets bid for their seventh straight win. Stanton 0 for 3 tonight, homered in each of the first two games of the series, and in each of his last five games against the Mets. Mm. Can't catch up with that fastball, and it's 2 and 2. Carlisle, what, 36 years old? 37. And can still bring it. He's got a rubber arm. Two two struck him out. Buddy Carlisle fans John Carlos Stanton third time the big guy's been struck out tonight. Down fastball. Boy, the Marlins are just flailing. That's ten strikeouts for Med pitching tonight. Now two out of the inning and Carlisle will take on Martin Prado. The thought was that with Familia and Blevins both unavailable tonight that if the Mets needed a save chance it would go to Carlos Torres. And who knows whether they'll need a save chance. But you could see Carlisle staying in there and just running off the last five outs. With a four run lead would you have your bullpen ready and let Goodell start it and get him some work. Mm. If he gets in trouble. We might be past that point I'm not sure. Maybe if you get a couple more runs. And that's a fastball strike going to the Prado. That's will have Kadire Murphy and Campbell up in the bottom of the eighth. Buddy Carlisle's been in attack mode from the moment he joined the Mets last May. Oh, and two to his former Braves teammate, Martin Prado. Hit hard down to third, but Campbell's got it. And the side retired. Buddy Carlisle comes in to get a couple of key outs, sending us to the bottom of the eighth at City Field with the Mets up 5 1. from almost anywhere. 
And singing along with Piano Man. New City Field tradition. Very nice. Very appropriate. Mr. Billy Joel. We're going to the bottom of the eighth inning at City Field. That's yeah. trying to go to nine and three on the season. Face Brad Hand in relief for the second straight night. Hand pitched in last night's ball game and got the loss. Went two thirds of an inning plus three hits, two runs. He was a tad unlucky. He gave up a broken bat hit to Lagaris, a hit and run single to Duda, and then Kadire rolled one that Morse couldn't get to that went through for a base hit. And that cost him a couple of runs. Kadire hit a long double to center field his last time up and came in to score. One for three on the night now is a seven game hitting streak. And he takes a fastball for a strike. But the oddity of Kadire's season continues in that he's swinging the bat very well right now, but two more strikeouts tonight. So he's got 17 strikeouts in 44 at bats. And yet he's hitting 318. Go figure. Uh, yes. So what's going to happen when he gets really red hot? <laughs> Murphy on deck, Campbell behind him. Carlos Torres getting ready to pitch the ninth inning. Morris, Ozuna, and Salta Lamaki are due up for the Marlins in the ninth. Bless you. Thanks, Swing and a miss. <laughs> two, two to Kadire. There's another one. We're at full service booth here. Woo. The wind's picked up a little bit. Allergy season? Possibly. 2 2 coming. And a little tapper might be trouble. Yes, it is. And Kadire's got an infield hit. Another one. He's had a couple of those <laughs> in this series. Seventh inning two nights ago, he topped one in a very similar spot for a hit that drove in a run. Still runs pretty well. So Kadire with his second hit of the night. He's living right. And now Murphy, who's had a rough night, 0 for 3 at the plate, a mistake in the field that did not cost the Mets because Jacob DeGrom was able to stay calm. Mets now have 10 hits on the night. Murphy trying to join the party. Murphy is 6 for 40 to begin the year, so he's hitting an even 150. These are numbers that you would never associate with Daniel Murphy. Every year is unique. Lifts this one to left. Easy for Yelich. And Kadire back to first one away. Curveball. There to hit. He's just been underneath, Dan. Just getting underneath the ball. Too many fly balls. So one out and one on now Eric Campbell who's two for two in a walk tonight singled stole a base scored a run in the second single drove in a run and scored a run in the sixth. Double play ball right to Echeverria and Gordon has to reach for it and gets upended by Kadire. Well, Kadire always goes in hard and Echeverria did Gordon no favors with the throw and Gordon got taken out. Good hard baseball leadership, veteran leadership. This should have been an easy two. Hey, what could die? That ball was hit hard. He got down there quick. Well done. You don't have to reinvent this game. It's beautiful the way it has been for over a hundred years. Gordon takes no offense. Waiting for Marcelo Zuna to retrieve a beach ball. Don't think that that doesn't send a positive 
message to the young Met players here to see Kadire go in there and play good hard nosed baseball. 36 years old. Right, Plays it hard every day. I like him. Lagares two for three tonight. Next Friday the Mets take on the Yankees. Here in the Bronx and you can watch it on New York's home for baseball picks 11. That's the Mets and the Yankees. Friday at seven on picks 11. Early this year. That's the Yankees playing three games in the Bronx next weekend. The meeting here at City Field will be in September. That's a little change of plan from prior years in the subway series. We'll get the one in Yankee Stadium out of the way for you early. Yeah. That one skips away from Salta Lamacchia and down to second base goes Campbell. Wild pitch charged to Brad Hand. Interesting, you see a catcher with his mask helmet on with the visor in front. I've never seen that. These are the visors in the back. Or am I mistaken? Have I not been some, paying attention? Some guys like doing it this way. Really? Yeah. Where have I been? Not catching. <laughs> Lefties. Swinging 3 0. And Salta Lockia on it. Off the bag oh. is Morris, and coming in to score is Campbell. Oh. Eric Campbell never stopped. And he scores from second base as the wide throw by Salta Lamakia pulled Morris off the bag. And it's six to one New York. All right. Salta Lamakia, my gosh, what a horrific night for him. Pulls him off the bag, and look at this. This is a hustling squad. Love it. Here comes Mike Redmond, and he's going to challenge this play. Did more stay on the bag? He might have. So we might get another ruling in favor of the Marlins. They've already had two go their way tonight. A Mets challenge that was not play was not overturned, and a Marlins challenge that on a play that was overturned. Well, you know what? With the Salt of the Machias. He's on the bag. It looks like the mayor, yep. isn't it? This one may go the Marlins' way again. It might take that run off the board. You know, you talk about players that when they don't hit, they take it out on the field. It certainly looks salty, like Salto and Machia is just affecting every aspect of his game. Play under review brought to you by Mazda, KBB.com's lowest cost to own brand over five years. Boy, we've had a lot of reviews in this series. The Marlins successful on their first challenge, so that gave him another one to use. And here's one more look at Morris's foot as that ball came his way. And you'd certainly have to think that they'll overturn this call. And the umpires have looked at it, and he's out. Okay. So they do overturn the call, and the inning comes to an end. So instead of a run, it goes as a 2 3 put out. And that'll send us off to the ninth. So it's a five one.
to one. That's to make a double switch as we go to the ninth. Kirk Neuenheis comes in to play left field. He'll bat ninth. And Carlos Torres in a non safe situation will try and finish it off for the Mets. Well, I think Terry Collins wants seven in a row. Keep this train running. Full steam ahead. Torres pitched two nights ago. Gave up a leadoff double to John Carlos Stanton. That's probably still ringing in his ears. But then he retired the next three with a couple of strikeouts. One of those three was Michael Morse, who is 0 for 3 tonight, 1 for 10 in the series. And Carlos starts off with a cutter, half swing, and he stopped in time, 1 and 0. Torres trying to finish it off for Jacob DeGrom, who went seven scoreless tonight and has now thrown 18 in the third consecutive shutout innings. Sean Gilmartin gave up a run in the seventh, but Buddy Carlisle came on to get a couple of key outs. And now Torres trying to put in the final nails. Ozuna and Salta Lamaki to follow for the Marlins, who are in danger of going to three and nine. On the season, after they had a team meeting today to talk about their slow start, two and one to Morris. If the Mets can get three more outs here without any major damage, Morris flies one to center, long run back from Agaris to the warning track near the wall, and it's out of here. Wow. There's some damage. Michael Morris hits one over the center field fence for his second home run of the year. And that cuts the Met lead to five to two. Long home run off the bat of Morris. Well, a solo shot late doesn't do much damage. The Marlins just had their opportunities to get some runs today, and they haven't got the big hit. And we're speaking in terms, of particularly of that sixth inning gear. When they had runners on first and third and one out, and they couldn't get a run in. Marcelo Zuna, one for three on the night, had a base at his last time up. And now Torres, who just gave up his first run this season on the home run by Morris, is behind Ozuna 2 0. And the Mets may get some further action going in their bullpen. They don't want to use Familia. Yeah, but you also don't want to let this game get away. Well, no fooling. Familia and Blevins were both ruled out of order for Terry Collins today. Ricky Bonus, the only man standing right now in that bullpen. And that's a strike three and one. So Torres trying to settle himself in after giving up the home run to Morse. Ichiro Suzuki on deck to pinch it for Salta Lamakia, and Ozuna's got another hit. So all of a sudden, it's getting a little dicey here in the ninth inning. Home run for Morris, base hit for Ozuna, and now Ichiro will pinch hit with the Marlins needing just one more base runner to get the tying run to bat. Little slider hanging, it's a much little better swing for Ozuna. And what do you do if you're Terry Collins? <sighs> First, you'll send Dan Worthen out to the mound to try and settle down Carlos Torres, and in. young Eric Goodell gets up in the bullpen. I would have liked to have had Goodell start the inning, but that's yeah, that's moot. Play of the game brought to you by the Honda Dream Garage Sales Event. Now at your Honda dealer, John Carlos Stanton, two men on, sixth inning, and Degrom runs a fastball in on him and strikes him out. And that was definitely the play of the game. One of three strikeouts for Stanton tonight. One of eight for Jacob DeGrom. So now Torres having some trouble here in the ninth inning. Has given up a home run and a single. And now Alex Torres joins Eric Goodell in the bullpen. So it looks like Terry's bound and determined to stay away from Familia and Blevins. So here's Ichiro. And he takes it way up high. Tor Torres really struggling. Struggling to throw strikes. Ichiro started last night, went one for four, had a pinch hit triple the night before. And Danny Echevarria, the on deck batter. And Ichiro takes a strike. Ichiro is batting for Salta Lamakia, and that'll give you an idea where Salta Lamakia is standing has fallen. 
They have two players left on the bench. Their backup catcher Real Muto and Donovan Solano an infielder. Fouled away one and two. Both are right hand batters. And one of them. If the inning gets that far we'll have to bat for the pitcher is two batters away. Well, Zuna at first and nobody out. And a fastball strike three call. Ichiro caught looking and there's the first down in the ninth. Wow. Borderline pitch. Let's see what Darno does with the glove. He frames it. He frames it. Let's see. Boy, I tell you what, it's uh, too close to take. Pitcher got the call there. So a huge out for Torres to try and settle himself down. And now we'll take on Echeverria, who's one for three tonight. And he takes the cutter high for ball one. JT Rail Muto has come on out on deck to be a pinch hitter. Echeverria hits it hard, and that's a base hit. Ozuna pulls it at second. Echeverria with the third hit of the inning, and just like that, the Marlins will get the tying run to the plate here in the top of the ninth. Hanging sliders. Right over the middle of the plate. Same spot as. Ozuna's base hit. Same pitch, same result. Just out of the reach. And it is getting dicey. So the crowd, which was in a celebratory fashion, now getting awfully restless. Torres has given up three hits to the first four batters he's faced. Rayo Muto, who just began his big league. Season a few days ago when Jeff Mathis got hurt started the first two games of this series and went one for seven. And he Whoa. ducks out of the way as the ball goes to the backstop and the runners move up. A very wild pitch by Torres. And now runners are at second and third. So that takes the double play possibility away. Wow. Torres is just. Not even close. Well, you got the lefties coming up behind Real Muto, Gordon and Yelich, so we might be seeing Alex Torres in a moment behind Carlos Torres. 1 0 to Real Muto, the tying run at the plate. And the cutter on the outside corner for a strike. 1 and 1. Slider over your head, and then second pitch slider on the outside corner, knee high. Unpredictable tonight, <laughs> Mr. Torres. Been the workhorse for the Mets the last two years. Led the National League in relief innings last season. And the curveball in for a strike. And now it's ahead one and two on Real Muto. Ozuna at third, Echeverria at second, one out. One, two. Struck him out. Fastball, second strike out of the inning for Torres. Now, what do you do with the left hand hitter? Gordon, not a home run hitter. Do you stay with Torres? I think you do. I'm with you. Alex Torres is so untested and can be so wild. Well, New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Mazda. Mazda is KBB.com's lowest cost to own brand over five years. Marlins down to their final out. D. Gordon is four for four tonight. An RBI double his last time up. And Torres misses high, ball one. It just seemed like after that pitch, he sailed over the head of Real Muto, the first pitch that he's kind of focused in and made three nasty pitches. Gordon, the tying run at the plate with two down. And he swings and misses. One and one. Foul, and now the Marlins are down to their final strike. Yeah. 
One and two to Gordon. Line drive over Murphy. Base hit. That'll bring in two runs. D. Gordon with his fifth hit of the night drives in Ozuna and Echeverria and the Met lead is down to a skinny run and the speedy Gordon is on base with the tying run with Christian Yelich coming up. And now the lefty. What a night for D. Gordon. Hanging slider. It was down but too much of the plate. And we've got a one run ball game here. Second career five hit game for D. Gordon. And the Mets will switch Torres's. Carlos will exit. Alex will enter with his new padded cap. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the United Mileage Plus Explorer card. Hang on. Alex Torres comes in to bid for his first major league save. Marlins have scored three in the ninth. It's a one run game. Gordon at first with the tying run. Christian Yelich the batter and Torres throws over. Well there's Alex Torres came over from the pods. Late in spring training. He gave the Mets a third left hander in the pin and uh, they're fortunate to have one. Tonight to get this tough hitter out who's had a tough night. He had one save in the minor leagues in rookie ball in 2006. And that's the only save of his professional career. Yelich is one for four tonight. Has struck out three times. And he takes one on the outside corner of strike. If you're wondering about the hat. Last year Alex Torres became the first major leaguer to wear the padded protective hat. He had been wearing a regular cap since joining the Mets since they gave him a redesign he didn't like but they brought this new halo to wrap around his cap that he's wearing for the first time tonight and hoping that it is a good luck charm. And Yelich takes a strike. Well, I'll tell you what Mark Cedarstrom has had a pretty wide strike zone. That's Torres's best pitch that changeup. And he got a nice call on that one. And now the Marlins again down to their final strike. John Carlos Stanton would be next. Torres trying to keep this game from getting to Stanton. 0 oh 2 to Yelich. And a check in on Gordon. He's been caught stealing twice in this series by Travis Darno. 
Stanton in the on deck circle and Goodell is going to be the man as Stanton gets up. Alex Torres ahead 0 2. He struck him out and the ball game is over. Gillich lost the bat. Alex Torres gets his first major league save. And the Mets have won seven games in a row for the first time since 2010. They've begun 6-0 at home for the first time since 1985. They hold off the Marlins in the ninth and win it 5-4. Well, 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 it looked like the Mets were going to breeze to their seventh going into the ninth inning with a four run lead. Marlins made a run for it and Torres of uh, Alex Torres, as Gary said, gets his first save. Mets had home runs from Darno and Flores. And here's the last pitch right here. Delayed reaction from the crowd because they were just fooled by the loss of the bat. Everybody in the field froze as well. But Darno had the baseball as the bat wound up in right field. And Alex Torres gets one huge out for his first major league save. And the Mets have themselves a seven game winning streak as they've taken the first three of this series from the Marlins. Game summary brought to you by the generously appointed Lexus ES and ES hybrid Jacob DeGrom seven scoreless innings tonight eight strikeouts 18 and a third consecutive scoreless innings for DeGrom as he gets his second win of the year Mets win 5-4 we'll come back with more from Flushing in just a moment